What would a character look like if you took equal parts nobleman, wild west bounty hunter, and steampunk magician, mixed them all up in a blender, and then blessed him with the divine might of Harmony himself? You'd probably end up with someone like Swaxilium Ladrian, the protagonist of Brandon Sanderson's second Mistborn series, and the subject of our character deconstruction today. Who is Wax? What makes him tick? What does his future hold? What are the themes surrounding him that I should be paying attention to for the book report I have due in three hours? All of this and more will be answered by Bookborn and I right after the title. We'll see you after the jump. Maxilium Ladrian was born the first son of a noble house around 300 years after the Catasandra. With both noble and terrace blood, Wax was gifted both allomantic and ferrochemical abilities from birth, making him twinborn, one of just a few to have ever existed on Scadriel. But while his twinborn abilities granted great power, they also trapped him in between two separate worlds, the worlds of the noble elites and the world of the terrace. Never one to follow the rules, Wax chose to reject both paths and instead forge his own. Early on in his life, Wax left the Elendel Basin for the Roughs, a series of desert towns outside of the basin characterized by their sense of frontier justice. From here, Wax fell into the role of a frontier lawman, gaining the reputation of being a sort of roughs gentleman along the way, and slowly building his resume by taking down bounty after bounty. But he didn't accomplish this all by himself. His wife Lessie was a fellow lawkeeper, and early on in his career, he helped save a young convict named Wayne from hanging, who would go on to become Wax's deputy and an excellent lawkeeper himself. But this all changed when Lessie was killed in the line of duty, which forced Wax to give up his life in the roughs, move back to the city, and resume his role as the head of the noble house Ladrian. From here, his life goes through yet another metamorphosis, as he gradually relearns his place in the city and how to adapt to a life now completely foreign to him. Wayne, being Wayne, ends up tagging along and eventually moving into the city with Wax. Due to noble politics and his house's lack of funds, he is pushed into an engagement with Steris Combs, the daughter of a lesser but very wealthy noble house. And when Steris comes into Wax's life, so too does Marcy, Steris's half-sister, a cadmium misting and a constable in training to boot. The gang starts to work together and solve various mysteries in the city, including that of Miles' hundred lives and the Vanishers, Bleeder, and the greater mystery of the Set, Trell, and their collective plans. Along the way, they also meet several new acquaintances, including Milan the Chondra, all of this comes to a head in Bands of Mourning, where Wax and the team find themselves saving a southern foreigner, using their technology to pilot airships, and embarking on a hunt to find the fabled Bands of Mourning. When we leave Wax at the end of this book, he's temporarily bested the set, found the Bands of Mourning, and returns to Elendel with the discovery of the Southern Scadrians and a whole new continent. If you're interested in learning more about the myriad details of Wax's life, we talk much more about him, his acquaintances, and Era 2 in general in my video recapping all of Era 2 in prep for the new book, which you can view by clicking on the card in the top right corner of your screen right now. It goes into much more detail on each of these characters and goes through some in-depth summaries of each book. I'd highly recommend watching that if it's been a while since you've read Mistborn Era to. Now that we understand a little bit about Wax's life, let's take a deeper dive into his magical abilities, how they work, what he can do with them, and what makes Wax's twin-born pairing so powerful. Waxilium Ladrian is what is known as a crasher, the twin-born combination of an allomantic steel pusher and a furochemical skimmer. While these would be unique and interesting powers by themselves, together they form an even greater set of abilities that we see Wax demonstrate throughout the series. Let's dive into the intricacies of the abilities themselves, then play around with how they work together. Steel pushing is the metallic art of, well, pushing stuff. When an allomantic steel pusher swallows steel, they see blue lines pointing to every source of metal nearby. 
When they burn the steel they've swallowed, it allows them to push against any of these sources of metal. This can have various results depending on the weight differential between the two objects. For instance, if a steel pusher pushes horizontally on a coin, it goes flying away from the steel pusher. Since the coin is so much lighter than the allomancer, the coin barely pushes back at all, and the allomancer stays put. If a steel pusher were to push horizontally against, say, a metal wall, an object that weighs more than them, they would go flying backwards, and in this situation, only the allomancer moves. Just for good measure, let's play around with these concepts a bit. If an allomancer were to push a coin horizontally, but there was a wall in the way, what would happen? The allomancer would push on the coin like normal until it hit the wall. As soon as the coin hit the wall, the force of the push being applied to the coin wouldn't have anywhere to go except backwards, and then the allomancer would be pushed back. It should be noted that Wax can also do something notable with his allomantic steel pushing, something that he refers to as creating a steel bubble. Essentially, what this means is that wax is nudging all metal objects within a slight radius. This comes in handy when people shoot at him, as the subtle steel pushing causes all but the most dead-centered bullets to veer off to the side and miss wax entirely. Next, let's look at Wax's ability to ferrochemically store weight. When Wax has his iron bracers on, he can store his weight into them over time, spending days on end much lighter than he normally would be. When he needs to, he can tap this stored weight, quickly increasing his mass directly proportional to how much weight he's saved up over time. By storing weight for a longer time, you can become much heavier for a short period. Interestingly, becoming very heavy does not seem to have an impact on the health of a skimmer. Even if a skimmer were to increase their weight many fold, Old, their body stays intact and doesn't collapse under the added weight. Now let's look at how these powers interact together. As one might be able to guess, these two powers pair very well together and allow a freedom of movement unparalleled by all but a few orders of Knight's Radiant. Storing weight and then steel pushing can have dramatic effects, allowing the Twinborn to soar over great distances. Conversely, tapping their metal mind while steel pushing leads to the opposite effect as the additional weight allows the Twinborn to push large metal objects, or even deform them if the object is anchored to the ground. But none of this would be complete without the weirdness of Cosmere physics. Since conservation of momentum is a thing in the Cosmere, increasing and decreasing one's weight while in motion can also lead to some interesting effects. Increasing one's weight while in flight leads to a net loss in speed, the opposite happening while storing weight. By the time we meet Wax, he is an expert at using all of these mentioned abilities in conjunction with one another, and we see myriad examples of their combined uses. I can't wait to see what the next book brings. Uh, maybe we'll even see how his powers can be augmented and enhanced with Southern Scadrial's technologies. But in the meantime, let's take a closer look at a few other things that make Wax Wax. Notably, the themes of law surrounding him and his pathist religion. The themes of law, law enforcement, and justice are central themes in Wax's life, and the questions that these themes bring up are central to understanding his character. We see him practicing an extrajudicial form of justice in the Terrace Village as a youth, stopping and apprehending a peer as he attempts to kill another Terrace youth. In this instance, he took it upon himself to stop a crime, and working outside of the Terrace judicial system to bring about justice. Wax then moves off to the Ruffs, where he blossoms into a lawman in his own right, carrying out the laws of the Ruffs and bringing justice to outlaws using the legal system, but a legal system that is far more flexible than any of the Basin cities. When Wax moves back into Ellendale, he very quickly gets sucked back into investigatory mode when a rash of crimes is carried out by one of his old lawman colleagues from In the Ruffs. This is a very interesting play on the themes that have been floating around, as both parties feel their stances are completely justified, though both of them are, at this point in the story, working outside the law to accomplish their goals. Miles' hundred lives acts as an interesting foil to wax, but also serves as a vessel for moral predicaments that rise around the themes of justice, law, and how one enforces the law. Can violent actions be justified by their outcomes? What is justice in the absence of a legal system? And is a personal sense of justice justifiable when working outside of a society's established legal system? At what point are extrajudicial actions justified and at what point are they not? What is justice anyways? We also see Wax surround himself with other lawmen and constables. 
notably Wayne and Marisi. A former Ruffs lawman and city constable respectively, Wayne and Marisi helped build on these established themes and push Wax into pursuing the law in one way or another. But the law isn't the only force that shapes Wax's life. Religion plays a large part in shaping his character as well. Wax grew up in a survivorist household, but as far as we know, he never really took to their teachings. Nor was he moved by his time in the Terrace Village. No, he wouldn't find a guiding light until he finally struck out on his own. When first moving to the roughs, Wax encountered a strange woman on the train taking him out there. She gave him a metal earring and spoke to him about Pathism, the religion founded by Harmony. For the next several years, Wax quietly practiced his religion, meditating with his earring on as dictated in Harmony's teachings. He'd pray and meditate and talk to his god. And God was listening. In fact, God had low-key been grooming Wax this entire time. It was Harmony's idea to have him move to the roughs, Harmony's idea to give Wax the earring, and Harmony's idea to kill Lessie. Someone else moves us, lawman, is a direct quote from Miles Dagotur, and it pretty much hits the nail right on the head. Harmony has been moving Wax around and setting him up for something that Wax doesn't understand or even know about. And when he finds all of this out, he's pissed. From the beginning of Alloy of Law to Bands of Mourning, we have seen Wax undergo a religious journey, though one that's not quite complete yet. He's gone from blind obedience to outright rejection to begrudging acceptance after his talk with Harmony at the end of Bands. While he's still not super happy with Harmony or his methods, Wax does seem to finally understand that there's more to this. Skydrill is being encroached upon and Harmony is powerless to stop it. The whole reason that Harmony's been grooming Wax is so that Skadriel will have a weapon against these encroachments. A sword, if you will. In fact, Wax could very well be the best chance of staving off total annihilation of the planet and its peoples. But Wax hasn't officially decided anything as of yet, and at the end of Bands, he's still not quite on board the Harmony train. Which leads to the question, where will Wax go from here? Okay! Predictions. Um, so I could see Wax's future going a number of different ways from here. So I'm gonna step through a few different options and kind of go over how likely they are, how unlikely. We're getting into tinfoil territory pretty quickly here though. I think that the most likely outcome of the final Wax and Wayne book is Wax accepting his destiny and finally becoming an actual bona fide like servant of harmony in some respect. Uh, so what does this mean? We could see him hopping around planets, you know, negotiating with disparate peoples, uh, and generally carrying out Harmony's will throughout the Cosmere over possibly even millennia. We, we have no idea what this will look like, so we're just kind of spitballing here. Uh, if this does happen, he may become either a full Mistborn or some sort of weird Mistborn fair chemist Chondra mix in the process? I don't know. Uh, what else could happen? Well, the opposite could also happen, and I think this is the far more interesting choice for Sanderson to make, uh, just character-wise. What would happen if Harmony offered Wax some sort of position of being his servant in the Cosmere, and Wax actually said no. Wax turns him down. Well, I think he would live the rest of his life happy, running his house, being a politician, helping the common people, and, you know, generally doing his own thing. I think this is a perfectly legitimate choice for him to make, and I think it's one that makes a lot of sense from a character perspective, right? He's had his life strings pulled by Harmony for way too long. Um, and maybe Wax decides that he doesn't want to be a servant of Harmony anymore, which is, you know, again, a perfectly legitimate choice. He'd be making his own path to help people as opposed to working through Harmony. If this were to happen though, interestingly, someone else would have to step up and take his place um, and do Harmony's will throughout the Cosmere, right? The other options are of course Wayne and Marisi. We're gonna talk about that in full detail in another video, I promise. Third option I have for you today is, um, it's weird. <laughs> What would happen to Wax if Harmony is incapacitated to the point of not being able to 
change wax into a chondra, Miss Barn, fair chemist, etc., etc., right? Like he had originally intended to. Well, if this were to happen, I think it would make sense for Harmony to use wax in some sort of other way, as a, like, spy embedded in the ghost bloods, something like that, right? He'd still be hopping around planets and doing things around the Cosmere, possibly with some sort of direction from Harmony. He just wouldn't be under Harmony's direct control, I guess. However, if we do see him work his way high enough up into secret societies or, you know, specifically the Ghost Bloods, we could very well see Wax pushing them down a path that would align closer to what Harmony set him out to do in the first place. I don't think Wax would particularly like this job, um, but if he saw enough of a threat to his homeworld, I fully believe that Wax would be able to set aside his dislikes and, um, and do what needs to be done. The final option I have for you today is he just goes rogue, says, Harmony, I don't like you anymore. Peace out, I'm joining the Ghost Bloods, and then he goes gallivanting around the Cosmere with the Ghost Bloods. <laughs> it doesn't seem very fitting with what we know of his character, but it would be an interesting story. I am curious. What do you think is going to happen, Bookborn? Well, because we know Sanderson has said that book four of Era 2 has to come out before book five of the Stormlight Archive, I do feel like it's inevitable that we will have Cosmere Travelers coming out of book four. Now, I may be wrong, but I'm very convinced that that's what's going to happen. And I think it probably makes the most sense that Wax is at the head of that. I have a really hard time feeling that Wax is going to be a servant of harmony. I don't know why that doesn't sound right to me. I know he had that big revelation at the end of book three, but I struggle to see how that will work. I kind of envision that maybe Wax and Steris and Wayne and Marcy will go rogue. <laughs> they find a way to world hop and are trying to protect something that's happening. I don't know. Um, that's really far-fetched, <laughs> but that's just kind of what I'm going to predict. I'm going to put it out there as a wild prediction. I think it's very interesting that we had to have book four before book five as well. I wonder if we're going to see some sort of acknowledgement of Era 2 in the Stormlight Archive 5 book. What's very interesting to me is that Era 2 chronologically happens after the Stormlight Archive first five books. So I am curious what's going on there and what we are going to find out. Either way, I think Wax is one of the characters that's probably here to stay in the Cosmere. So I'm very interested to see how they figure out world hopping and will it be for Harmony, against Harmony, or just neutral with Harmony? I guess we'll have to Raffo. Rust and Ruin, it's been a blast talking about all that with you. I'd like to give a big thanks to Bookborn for her help in this video. It's always a blast having her on the channel. If you like the video, you know the button to hit, and if you want to see more like it, I'm sure you can find a button for that as well. As always, take care, and have a fantastic day, folks.